very glad that you clicked on this video today to join me in bringing you some amazing bookish content. And as you can see by today's title, I am going to be doing the video that Rachel, a library fairy, I'll make sure to link her video down below in her channel, just uploaded. <laughs> um, and that is a whole recommendation video on books about books. And if you've watched any of my videos in the past, you know that I absolutely love books about books. It is a like collector's niche I want to have in my personal library. So right here, I have a massive stack of books about books ranging from YA books, middle grade books, historical fiction books, regular fiction books, romance books. Like I have so many here and I want to talk to you guys about them. So without further ado, let's jump straight into my huge recommendation on books about books. I am definitely a person who likes to buy books and has yet to read them. Now, I will get them all done. So I'm gonna start off with some of the books I have read and just kind of go from there. But like, as you can see, most of these books I have not read, but it doesn't matter because I wanna to talk to you about them because they're on my list to read in time. I'm a very slow reader. But the very first book that I have is a Biblio mystery. So if you saw my New York City vlog, several videos back now, I'll make sure to link it down below. I was in Manhattan and I went to a bookshop there called the Mysterious Bookshop where these Biblio mysteries were. These are Little Mysteries on Books About Books. These are written by several different authors and these are limited and special edition. You can only purchase them at the library in New York City. So that is really amazing. But to give you the names of them, I have Book Club, which I read. I liked, I thought it was kind of interesting. Nothing really special, but it was interesting. Then we have The Honest Last or The Last Honest Horse Thief. We have The Mysterious Disappearance of the Reluctant Book Fairy. We have The Honeymoon Trap. We have The Book Thing. We have The Bookcase. The Mystery Ink. And the very last one I have is The Book of the Lion. And I am not gonna be linking these down below, but I'll be sure to link at least the website of the Mysterious Bookshop. And then if you want any of these books, just make sure you stop and pause the video, screenshot it, go put it into your Goodreads or in your Amazon cart and then come back just because it's so many books here. But the next book that I liked, I originally rated it pretty low and that was The Invisible Library. But now after looking at it, thinking about it. I definitely want to reread this book and I'm definitely sure it will have a higher rating from me. I believe I gave it like three stars when I first read it, but I'm thinking now as my taste in books has kind of changed, I definitely think I will like this book a little bit more. This was really interesting too. It's kind of like there are special editions of books that this certain society is sought, like seeking after and they have these special individuals who are trained to go seek out these different texts from different realms. And so it's like, fantasy there's a little bit of like random like sci-fi ish a little bit of like there's this, this history in it it's this very vast and broad it's a lot but it's super interesting I just think when I first read it my taste was very you know one way and now it's different so I definitely think I will like it even more if I reread it and then the Paris Library I really love this book this is based in Paris it's absolutely beautiful it's based off the APL if you look online you'll find the American Paris Library I absolutely loved it. It was a slow read for me. There's a little bit of romance in this book. It's during the time of war when the Nazis are overtaking in Paris at the time. And this librarian here has to kind of like go undercover and secretly is still like giving out books to the different soldiers and those who are injured in the war. It's just really beautiful. I absolutely love historical fiction based on this time period. And I love historical fiction when it's about wi um, women who are like the main characters and it's about books. I have several of those in the stack, so I'll make sure to kind of show you them. And then I have some of my Goodreads. Um, I cannot remember them for the life of me, but The Burn Bookshop, I believe is one of the names. I'll make sure to post it on the screen. Not, the wartime bookshop I'll post that one on the screen and then the two sisters a fog or something I'm not sure I'm probably butchering all the names but I'll post the little pictures on the screen I want to read those I really want a copy of them but those are also books um those that follow like the book about books or historical fiction kind of vibe that this one does then we have The Dictionary of Lost Words, and this is a book that I just got on Audible so I'm going to be listening to it so I'm probably going to start that probably today 
But this is also really cool. And this follows a young girl and her father. Her father works for Oxford and is making the first English dictionary. And so they're like a group of individuals are putting words together to make the first dictionary. But they're, she's noticing that words are being left out. Words that have to depict certain people's cultures and experiences that aren't being told. And she's going to go seek out those words. So it's very interesting. Then... I have a whole middle grade series. I believe there's one more book I'm not I'm missing that I don't think is out yet, but it is the Pages in Co. The Book Wanderers by Anna James. And if you've seen one of my shorts recently, or not recently, but like within the last couple of months, this I did a shorts on this as being one of the one really awesome middle grade series. I cannot wait to dive into this. Um, but yeah, this is the different books we have. This book right here, and this I guess just follows. Some children, I really don't know. Honestly, I picked up this series because it's a book about books. It's middle grade, um, but the books are really cute. But if I can just read the back, I don't even know which one is book one, to be honest with you. I'm gonna go with this one. Ever since her mother's disappearance, 11 year old Tilly Pages has found comfort in the stories at Pages & Co, her grandparents' bookshop. But when her favorite characters of Anna Green Gables and Alice in Wonderland start showing up at the bookshop, Tilly's adventures become very real. Not only can she follow Anne and Alice into their books, she discovers that she can book wander into any story she chooses. Tilly's, surprisingly, Tilly's surprising new abilities leads her to find fun and exciting adventures with danger that may, be, that may be lurking on the very next page. So this seems super interesting. Um, it kind of reminds me of the land of stories, which is also kind of like book about books, which I did not even put in this. Thing, but it's more about a book that two children, I'll put a picture of the first book on the screen, they fall into this book, this book that their grandmother gave them that has like a lot of like sentimental value in their family, like an heirloom, and they're taking on the wildest fa uh, like fairy tale adventure with Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, uh, the Big Bad Wolf, like just so many things. And it's a really beautiful book. So honestly, that should be in this list, but I don't see it at the current moment. I honestly don't know where, I think it's up there on my shelf, but that is another book about books, but a little bit more adventure, kind of like this. But I'm super excited to dive into these. And then I'm currently on book number two of the Land of Stories, The Enchantress Returns, which is just a continuation. So those are really good. That's a really good middle grade book about book series. It's super fun, full of fairy tales. And I think this one will also be very good. It seems like it also has that fairy tale vibe where they're diving into stories. And I believe I have one more book that's middle grade on my stack or if I'm not mistaken that talks about children diving into a book <laughs> I need to locate it it's somewhere in here but it might be oh no it's this one right here yeah the story thieves so this is the next book that I want to show you in this really cool recommendation video but this is the story thieves again where children are falling into books this is a middle grade series but this is also a really amazing book that follows children kind of diving into a story and going on the wildest adventure this is also really awesome so it's like a lot of the middle grade books that I've looked at that are about books kind of follow that same vibe where children are just kind of diving into stories and I really love that then we have Book Scavengers, which is another middle grade series. And this I picked up at the airport on my way to California. <laughs> um, very random purchase, but I was like, this is about books and I need it in my collection. Um, but this follows 12 year old Emily and she's on the move again. Her family is relocating to San Francisco. How ironic, because that's exactly where I was going. Her home, um, home of li her literary idol, Grayson Griswold, creator of Book Scavenger, a game where books are hidden and clues to find them are revealed through puzzles. So that sounds super int interesting too. Very much of an adventure book, you know, a little bit of a mystery. I really love that. And I think that's going to conclude like all the middle grade books that I have. But then we're going to go into just your regular fiction with a little bit of romance, which is The Last Chance Library. And this is also really just pretty book that I picked up at Barnes & Noble not too long ago. But it's absolutely stunning. And it says, lonely librarian June Jones has never left the sleepy English village where she grew up. Shy and reclusive, the 28-year-old would rather spend her time buried in books than venture out into the world. It kind of reminds me of... Emily Henry's 
I'll post a picture of it on the screen here. That was good, but just like the library is kind of dying. Also the Christmas bookshop, which I DNF'd, kind of follows that same vibe of like a, something happening to the library, someone comes in to try to help and then a little romance is kindled kind of deal. But I think Emily Henry book uh, follows like an author who's like in a, like a little bit of like a writing slump a little bit, or both of the books she has, which is, I'll post both of them on the screen. I don't remember. I'm really bad at remembering names of books, but I read both of them. I liked both of them, but like they kind of give me similar vibes of this. And let me know down below if you've read any of these books and what you thought about them. But I guess I'll go into the next kind of like fiction book that's similar to The Last Chance Library, and that is The Banned Bookshop of Maggie Banks. And this follows that kind of same premise where there is a bookshop that's going under that kind of goes underground secretively because the theme of the bookshop was one way, but this new owner or person who's stepping in to like take care of the bookshop is trying to do something a little bit different, which is like not the vibe, like people want things to kind of stay the same. They don't like change. So she's kind of being a rebel a little bit and we're gonna see kind of how that takes the bookshop. But this is the next book. This is by Shauna Robinson. And then we can go into Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, which is also a book about book and to an extent, but it's about this lady named Emily Wilde, who is writing an encyclopedia on fairies. So everything that has to do with them. So she goes, if I'm not mistaken, to a little village in the north and just like working on her studies and writing and kind of just getting a background scoop and information so she can collect to write this encyclopedia but then there's a little romance and she runs into his name Wendell Blampley and Wendell just kind of throws everything for the loop she doesn't know what's going on she doesn't know why he's there and what's his purpose but her heart doesn't know what to do so obviously we're gonna have a little bit of romance but the cover of this book is absolutely stunning I picked it up at Barnes and Noble. It was quite expensive, 28 bucks. If you do have the Barnes and Noble like um, little card, you do get like a 10% off if I'm not mistaken. But just being that it's like super thin, I really just bought it for the cover and what it's about. I don't think it was necessarily worth that much money, but it's super cute. I'm super excited to kind of dive into this. And then we can go into this little mystery kind of book that I also got at the Mysterious Bookshop in New York. And that is Book to Die by John Dunning. And a Apparently, this is supposed to be like a really, really good book about book in terms of mystery. Like this is supposed to be like kind of one of the top books. I haven't really heard anything about this author or this book, but basically this is following a homicide detective who doesn't always play by the books, but he's also a collector of rare and first editions of whether that's like special, you know, artifacts or books or different things. And a local bookshop owner if I'm not mistaken, is murdered. And so now it's the detective's responsibility to figure it out, but he doesn't play by the book, so he actually gets benched and kind of taken away from the case. But regardless of that, and because of his passion, he's gonna continue and search and kind of figure out what's going on, all the while kind of looking for certain um, items that are going missing, like things that he finds as prized possessions, like books and certain things are going missing. So it's like a little bit of a mystery. You're solving a murder. This person is obsessed with like rare artifacts and books and whatnot. So I thought that was super interesting. And I like the kind of blood splatter detail on the front. And then we can go to The Woman in the Library by Sillery Gentle. And this is a mystery book about some individuals in a reading room at the at the Boston Public Library and a woman screams security guards are running it's shut down no one is allowed to leave and then we have these four individuals at this table and we're trying to figure out what is their reason for all being here what's going on what is happening and who is responsible for it? because I believe Yes, one of them is a murderer. So I believe either the woman is dead or she located the body. One of the two. But it's really fun because it's based in a library. It's about a, it's surrounded by books. So I think this is a video that is a books about books, but also about libraries or librarians and different things like that. But this seems super interesting and I cannot wait to dive into it. Okay, then, ooh, what do I go into next? I guess we'll go into the personal librarian and you guys. I'm so sad I haven't read this yet. I need to get that ugly sticker off there. Got it from Target. Now, when I saw this come out, I wanted it so bad, but I was like, no, I can't do it. Then I went, it was sold out. I don't know why it was like a moment when this like got sold out for a minute. And finally I was able to get my hands on it. 
Um, but this follows a librarian who is African American but has really, really fair skin. So she passes as a Caucasian woman. And she is the personal librarian of, she's a personal librarian of some really like influential man or something, if I'm not mistaken, or just some really famous or rich or wealthy person. And she's doing the job because everyone is under the impression that she is not black, she's white. And so it's just kind of following that premise a little bit. Um, this is, yeah, it says she's hired by J.P. Morgan to curate a collection of rare manuscripts, books, and artworks for his newly um, built library. And she becomes like really popular, it says on the back of the book. She becomes someone that people like want, like, oh my gosh, she's so talented. Like she finds all these great works and like his library is amazing. And like people are so infatuated and want to know her. Her taste is impeccable. She's great at negotiating. Like she's just good at her job, but she has a secret that she has to protect at all costs. It's the fact that if she's an African-American woman, she's not white. And so I think that's really interesting to kind of see how, um, even though you can be so talented and have such great skill and such great background and such great information, the color of your skin can really dictate how you're viewed and perceived in the world. And so this kind of reminds me of my aunt. She went to U of M um, and like the best school, one of the best schools in Michigan, and she plays the flute. I mean, exquisitely. And in college, she was first chair, but there was another girl, a Caucasian girl, who was you know, wanting to compete for first chair. But the professor almost to an extent had a little bit of like racist tendency or, you know, just was more, you know, pleased to kind of pick the Caucasian girl just for the sake of like, you know, she's white and my aunt is black and whatnot. But for the competition and to kind of decide who was gonna be first chair, he actually put them behind a curtain and they both played and he picked and my aunt won. And I think that was just like such an influential moment that I can think of that kind of reminds me of this book. It's like her skin, although my aunt is extremely fair, like extreme, like we do not look the same color. Um, it's just so interesting how just because of the color of your skin or your nationality, you could be looked at as negative. So this is gonna be a really good book and I cannot wait to read it. Next, I'm gonna go into The Mayfair Bookshop by Eliza Knight. This kind of follows similarly to the Paris Library in a way, if I'm not mistaken. Um, or maybe not. This is just, I haven't really read the book of this, honestly. When I saw, when I see books about books, I just buy them. Um, but this one is a, is present day and 1938, which is also like the American, the Paris library, which is like two different time periods. And this is about six sparkling Milford sisters known for their great stylish dresses, their bright green eyes. They have a very like dazzling life, but they are really full of turmoil. And one of the sisters is life is just kind of just struggling right now. She has an unfaithful broke husband who she has two Nazi sympathizer sisters and her hopes of motherhood are dashed. So apparently she also cannot have children or at least bear children. Um, and she finds a job at a bookshop in Mayfair and is hoping to make ends meet and discover a new life. And then in present day, a book curator, Lucy St. Clair gets a gig at that library and she can't get on the plane fast enough. Like she's always wanted to work there. She's dealing with the loss of her mother, but her dream came true when she walked into the store. And she brings her first edition of Nancy's work. So it looks like Nancy also wrote books. So that's really interesting. She kind of discovers how her life and Nancy's life are intertwined, which is also very similar to this book because it follows a young girl in Montana in 1983. And then it follows Odile, which is the main character of this book in 1939. And she ends up moving to Montana in her old age, meets this little girl named Lily, and they kind of connect and kind of their stories kind of intertwine so I think that is also really nice there then we have the book of lost friends which has a really pretty cover I really like a little painting absolutely love it and this also has two different time periods so Louisiana Louisiana in 1875 and then Louisiana in 1880 1987 um this follows the tumultuous era of reconstruction where three young women set off in an unwill as unwilling companions on a perilous quest. We have Hani, a freed slave. Then we have Lavania, a pampered heir to a now destitute plantation. And then we have Genoe Jane, who is Lavania's half-sister. Each carries private runes and powerful secrets as they head west. 
Um, it says the two sisters are on a journey of financial desperation, but for Hanny, she's torn from her mother before slavery's end. The pilgrimage reunites the agonizing question, could her long lost family still be out there beyond the swamps and lies of limitless frontiers of Texas and importably hope. So it's this following these three different women who connect, obviously like they maybe don't want to be, but like two sisters are kind of going their way, but they're following, they're going with this lady named Hanny, who is a slave now who's free looking for her family. So it just follows that. So this is also going to be quite an interesting book. And I'm really a fan of historical fiction. And I really like historical fiction when it's about books. I don't know. Something about it is just really nice. And it reminds me of the book Cloud Cuckoo Land, which is not necessarily historical fiction at all. But I'll post a picture on the screen. I don't have a physical copy of it. I listened to it through Audible. Highly recommend it. I thought it was a great book. Gave it five stars. This follows a book and five different individuals and how they're interacting with this book at a certain time period. So one of them is in the future. One of them is in Constantinople or two of them are in Constantinople during the war. One of them is like in present day. Um, so just in a, there's another individual too. I can't remember the time period they're in, but it just kind of follows how they interact with this book and how this story kind of helps them and impacts their lives. So that's why I really like historical fiction because it's really interesting to find how like a work of art or a book can impact people in the future as well. Now we have Zabor Other Psalms. And this follows a young man who is ostracized from his family, thrown out and rejected, and he loves to write. And he finds his comfort in his characters and in his writing, and he's so exquisite at it. And the family who has kind of shunned him and pushed him away, his father actually dies. And so it's his responsibility to kind of come back and see if his writing can kind of soothe his father and help his father in his time of need to just kind of let the pain of what's going on kind of ease it. So that's what this book is about. So it might be quite of a sad read. I haven't dived into it yet. Um, it seems quite interesting. And I really love how it's like, has like scroll kind of looking texture and whatnot to it. All right, so the next book I have is called The Book Woman's Daughter. This is book two in a series. I believe, yeah, The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek. I think this is book, that's book number one, which is right here on the back. There we go. But yeah, I accidentally picked up book two. <laughs> but this follows. It's based in the beautiful Kentucky mountains where Honey Lovett, which is a beautiful name, has always known the old ways can make a life harder. <laughs> can make a hard life harder. And she says, as the daughter of a famed blue skin, Troublesome Creek, pack horse librarian honey and her family have been hiding from the law all her life but when her mother and father are in prison honey realizes she must fight to stay free or risk being sent away for good picking up her mother's old pack horse library route honey begins to deliver books to the remote hollers of the appalachia honey is looking to prove that she doesn't need anyone telling her how to survive but the route can be treacherous and some folks aren't as keen to let a woman pave her own way so if Honey wants to bring freedom books to provide families who need it most, she's going to have to fight for her place along the way, learn that extraordinary women who run the hills and hollers can make all the difference in the world. So it makes me think that maybe it's illegal to just give books away or something of why her parents would be in trouble. But that seems super interesting. So this is book number two. I need to get book number one in order to be able to read this one, obviously, because I think it like follows it. Unless these are both standalones, then it's fine. But it's that book. Then I have one more book on this list, which is The Book of Lost Names. And this is during the Nazis in World War II, like during that time period. And it follows a librarian in Florida who returns, who returns to her desk one morning and her eyes lock on a photograph in the newspaper nearby. She freezes and it's an image of a book she hasn't seen in 65 years. She recognizes the Book of Lost Names. The accompanying article describes the looting of libraries across Europe by the Nazis during World War II, an experience able remembers all too well. As a graduate student in 1942, Eva was forced to flee Paris after the arrest of her father, a Polish Jew. Finding refuge in a small mountain town, the Free Zone, she begins forging an identity of documents for Jewish children fleeing to neutral Switzerland. But erasing people comes with a price, along with a mysterious handsome forger named Remy. Eva decides that she has to find a way to preserve the real names of the children who are too young to remember who they really are. The records are kept in the Book of Lost Names. And this will become even more vital when the resistance cell they work with is betrayed and Remy disappears. So I guess this is where she is helping these children escape. She's changing their names and identities to keep them safe. And she's recording it in a book that has been stolen. So it's like all of these individuals who don't know who they truly 
really are. So this seems really amazing. And like I said before, I absolutely love reading historical fiction that's based around World War II, when the Nazis and Jews, I just, I love it. I think it's a very interesting kind of time period to kind of learn. It was an area in school that I absolutely loved as well. So this will be the last book about books that I have. I really do hope that you guys enjoy. So let me count how many I actually showed you. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Twenty books and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 seven, I don't know what it is about it. I just love the whole concept of it. A book that's about books. I just absolutely love that. So yes, if you haven't, check out Rachel's video. Go see it. I'm about to go watch it right now, but I absolutely love it. I think it's awesome that she did it. Thank you, Rachel, for doing this. It gave me a fantastic idea because literally I love books about books and I cannot wait to find more recommendations in her video. So I'll make sure to link her information down below so you can go watch it after. But you guys, I love books about books. And if you know any really good books about books, whether that's mystery, sci-fi, fantasy, paranormal, um, middle grade, adult fiction, whatever it is, let me know so that I can, um, yeah, so that I can be able to have and add more to my collection. Yes, I need to read these. I know I'm a slow reader. I know I'm taking my time, but please do not feel bad about letting me know and telling me more books so I can go buy more books because I can't wait to do a haul for you guys. But yes, without further ado, I will catch you in my next video. And if you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up and hit your notification bell so you can notify it every single time my bubbly behind posts a video on YouTube and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Enjoy this bookish fan because we are so nice and we have so much fun together. And without further ado, I will catch each and every one of you in my very next video.